If you love doing dips, you came to the right video. Right now, I'll show you some cool variations. The first style is the banded dip, and I'm gonna show you two ways to do them. The first is having the band right behind you, grabbing onto the bars directly, and getting to work this way. I would also advise that you keep your head somewhat up, or at least neutral. Don't be looking all the way down, or else the band tension will feel a little bit easier at the bottom. Whereas here, you still have a bit more of a stretch. Plus, the upright position allows you to get more out of less weight. The second way is doubling the bands to something stationary, whether it be a power rack or dumbbell, attach it to your dip belt, and get to work. Either way, you're accomplishing the same goal. Check out the band tension, man. At the bottom, it's not that heavy, and at the top, you'll really feel it. This is how you get even better gains in the triceps from dips. And as I come down, the bands are pulling really hard, which creates an overspeed eccentric effect. This is great for anyone who has sternum pain, or simply wishes to minimize the negative stresses on the shoulder at the bottom given the immense weight of stretch you get from dips. So I recommend doing this as your second or third press, primarily for volume work. Reps of 15 to 20 would be absolutely perfect with these band tensions. You don't need to do triples and fives. Now sometimes I see guys doing dips with chains, but I really don't recommend doing it this way because it's like doing it with straight weights. There's no lengthening effect going on. So let me show you how to properly set them up. I folded the chain and attached two soft ties. Depending on your height, you might just need one. But let me show you what it looks like with the full body. The setup could be a bit tricky depending how you want to invert the strength curve, but if I lengthen out the soft tie this way, you'll see that as I come up, not even fully off. But at the bottom, there's a lot less tension. What's also cool is that you won't restrict the scapular movement since the chain is not compressing your body in any type of weight. It's right underneath you. Actually, a lot of guys would recommend this exact setup for benching but it can be done for dips too. And keep in mind, you can always add more chains for overload, whereas putting it on your back, you're limited. This way, you're not. So feel free to go heavy or use it for classic intermediate zones. Either way, you're covered. Now, if you're getting annoyed with all this accommodating resistance, don't worry, I got a really unique variation for you. That's all straight weight. Check it out, it's the landmine dip. What's really cool about this version is the arcing motion, which kind of goes with your body. So check it out. Super smooth, no swinging. The closest thing you'll get to a regular way to dip in terms of how heavy you can go. Only difference is, it's not the exact same movement. So you can really override the law of accommodation. It actually feels quite heavy, man. You're gonna like this. You can see me do 230 on the way to dip, but check out how difficult this is gonna be. Whoa! Not easy, I'm telling you. Whew. Simple setup and very safe. In terms of weighted dips, this is one of the hardest variations you could do, so enjoy it. It will be a love-hate relationship. Now, one of my favorite variations is the plyo dip with a clap, but the truth is you can really hurt yourself doing this movement and it's easy to miss groove. So instead, I recommend just jumping when doing the exercise. These will make you a better lifter and calisthenics athlete overall. And if you think a little jumping motion is easy, try doing four sets of 25 with a minute of rest in between and tell me how you feel right after. It's a little step down, but you'll still get more explosive doing these and they're not that easy to do anyway, so it's all good. Okay, everybody, so we're down to the final variation, the reverse grip dip. Let me show you a few different ways to do them. So this grip is slightly outside shoulder width apart and as you can see, it's pretty comfortable. Over the years, I've seen some lifters who couldn't handle any variation of dips except for the reverse grip. With the reverse grip, you'll feel the movement a lot more in the triceps and pecs. A bit less in the shoulders, even though in many cases you can go really deep like this, including with a wide grip, which is not typical of what I do, but let me show you regardless. I don't normally do wide grip dips, but with the reverse grip, I can do it without experiencing any shoulder pain whatsoever. Even though I'm getting a really deep range of motion, which is probably excessive for most of you. So that just goes to show how the external rotation makes a difference in reducing negative strains. Only con with this though is the potential restraint. So for this, I might recommend wearing some wrist wraps. By the way, there's another version of the reverse grip dip. Bring your hands in like this, which actually destroys the pecs, but feels horrific on the shoulders. So I wouldn't really recommend that version. 
So try out different positions and see what works best for your build. But I'm sure you'll find something that feels right. With that said, we're finished part two of dipping variations. An honorable mention would have been the ring dip, but I think that would have been too easy to call out. So try out these variations today. Let me know how it goes for you over time. Let me know if you would add anything to this list. Let's see in the comments section. And of course, inform me if you want more content like this. So get dipping and I'll see you in the next video.